Coming up on our next installment of America's Hope, it's that time of year, Thanksgiving and Christmas, when loved ones get together. But Melly and Steve Miller thought that their Christmas season would never come again. A year ago, Steve faced an aneurysm. We'll talk about his miracle story on our next episode of America's Hope. Welcome to America's Hope. I'm Kelly Wright. We're glad you could join us this hour. You know, it's the Thanksgiving Christmas season. It's that special time of year when loved ones near and far actually come together to celebrate family, faith, and love. And so tonight we'll introduce you to a very special couple who are very thankful indeed because a year ago they faced a life and death situation. It brought their community and doctors together in prayer and hope for a miracle. Right now, I want to talk to you about hope being ever present and always prevailing, even when it looks like it's gone. There are people who say that hope is fading. The next couple I'm going to introduce you to will tell you that hope prevails. It's never fading away. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel especially when you come up against something that you have no control over, a life and death situation. Here with me now are two good friends, I might add, in full transparency, Steve and Melanie Miller. Uh, thank you both for joining us uh, on America's Hope. And I mean, what a story. Both of you have faced health challenges. And Steve, uh, recently you went through something that that many people don't come out of exactly um, a year ago uh, wife and I were getting ready to go to church and it was a just a we were getting ready for just a, a great day and she walks out of the bedroom and she's asking me a question I never responded she asked me again she started yelling never responded she finally says you better be joking. And she walked in and she saw me hanging out of the bed, not realizing that at that time I had already started to have, you know, brain bleed. Um, she came over, uh, tried everything she could to, to first get me to answer her, and I couldn't. And she had to pull me back into the bed. And my memory goes in and out a little bit from that point, but I do remember her talking to me and I remember her yelling at me to just be present. And that's basically what it took at times just to be clear enough to answer her briefly. And it just started a whirlwind of, you know, the last year with, with everything that we had to go through. But just those, you know, those next three days were very critical for my life, our life, what we had planned for the future. And it's, it's been rewarding now, but to sit and look back on it, it's been, I don't know how we got through it. Well, I, I mean, Melanie, take me back to that day as Steve is explaining what he was going through mm -hmm. with a, a brain bleed, mm -hmm. aneurysm. Yeah. What were you experiencing and thinking, particularly from your nursing background? So when it started, um, he started into a grand mal seizure. And I used to be a nurse actively, pediatric trach and vent. And so when I saw the grand mal seizure, I knew immediately what was going on. And I wasn't sure why, because he's so young, you know, why would he be going through this? And I, I remember just flipping the phone over immediately and dialing 911, putting it on speaker picking him up, I don't know how I did it, put him on the middle of the bed, trying to get him to do rescue breathing because he'd stop breathing. Mm. And see, you weren't aware of this because a grand mal seizure, you're not even aware of what you go through. I remember my mother experiencing those and it was 
Uh, it's, it's very frightening, Melanie, when you see someone, particularly someone that you know and love and you're accustomed to seeing them very active and energetic as you are, mm -hmm. you're a golf pro. Correct. You're, you're the, the epitome of health. And then this happens uh, without any warning. It's a Sunday morning, you're getting ready to go to church, and bam, this happens. How did you deal with it in the days and weeks and months that followed? Well, I think for me, you know, probably the first four or five days, I was unconscious. So I couldn't, there was nothing, no memory came to me that said, you know, how do you deal with this? And I do remember kind of waking up and being a little bit more coherent and you know, just some stories that we've talked about, you know, as a family and with friends. And the things that I experienced were, I don't want to say impossible, but my memories of what happened were different than what actually happened. And I'll give an example. Um, my family came rushing down from, from Pennsylvania and Maryland to, to visit us in the hospital. And my brothers had to leave a few days later. And it was about the day that I was supposed to be, you know, trying to come back to, uh, to consciousness. And I remember my brother having a conversation with me, talking, and I'm talking to him as not as clear as I am right now, but basically saying, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to get back to teaching soon. I'm going to be okay. You know, I appreciate everybody coming down. And I told this to Melanie after I was fully conscious, and she says, that's impossible. You were intubated. You couldn't speak. And to me, that memory was like that I was still speaking. I mean, so are you saying that you could hear and maybe comprehend what people had been saying to you while they were visiting you? Yes. Before, before I was fully awake, you know, that was, that's basically like one of the first memories that I have. And Melanie tells a story that uh, she did not want my care team to come in and give me a negative prognosis in front of me. She wanted to protect me because if I had heard that, I may have shut down by hearing what, you know, all the negativity that could have happened. So I give her that credit that, uh, that she protected me and more or less started my healing process the right way. And, and during your healing process, did you have any encounters uh, that were out of body? I did not. I had my, uh, one of my... Uh, well, the doctor who's on the neurology team asked me that same question. He goes, did you experience anything out of body? You know, what, what did you experience? And I told him, you know, basically the, the conversation that I believed that I was having with my family and, you know, conversations that I thought I might have been having with her, but nothing out of body. And, and what you were experiencing was already uh, apparently enough to keep you uh, fighting for your life. Exactly. And did you sense anything looking back on that now and I know it's difficult to go back in and pull out that memory mm -hmm. uh, but did you sense that you were fighting for your life early on yes um, immediately after it happened um, there were things that uh, that I experienced that were you know I was in and out of consciousness so I could you know being taken out in a stretcher like I can remember being taken down the stairs and I hate to say crashing into a wall or being put into the back of the uh, ambulance and feeling that it was already 85 degrees that day. It was nice and warm. And then one of the last things I remember is at a stop sign. I just remember the, the vehicle stopping and starting, and then I drifted into, into a pretty deep sleep. So, Melanie, uh, you know, to hear Steve and see him, mm -hmm. you had conducted a uh, well, not you personally conducting a campaign of, of prayer support, but people rallied around you uh, yeah. from your family, from Steve's family, and from the community here in Orlando, Florida, because they know Steve. He's a popular guy. They want to rally around him and help him. What was it like to get that kind of support uh, from, from friends and family for prayer and for keeping both of you uh, nurtured and, and forward thinking, even when doctors were telling you something that was negative? You know, I say now to people who are going through this, there's, there's, two, there's two routes. There's the patient and there's the family. 
So we were blessed enough to have one of the best hospitals in the world to help save Steve's life, Advent Hospital here in Orlando. They did a fantastic job of taking care of Steve. I mean, as you can see, help mm -hmm. him to heal, you know. If it wasn't for my church family and our close friends, I, and most importantly, our God, it was, it was a scary time, but because of the people who lifted me, it, I was able to carry through. Mm -hmm. I was able mm -hmm. to make an impact for him because if I didn't have that kind of support, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I could have done it. Mm 